what's up tubers this is the SHTF hunter I wanted to do a video response to JJ Johnson at uh, reality survival um, I'm doing this video out of a kind of like a voice of experience when it comes to reloading and also you know buying bulk ammo so his the the video I'm doing the video response to is should you buy bulk ammo or reload for SHTF um, I do both and I'm going to try to explain why <laughs> I'm, I'm not the kind of person to put uh, you know don't put all your eggs in one basket type person but uh, I thought I might explain to you why I do both and some of my experience about reloading um, I took a few notes to try to stay on topic because I can get off topic really easy. <laughs> so, when it comes to the subject of ammo and guns, I can get off topic pretty easy. So, uh, my first, uh, how long have I reloaded? I've reloaded for, I'm guessing, close to 20 years. This right here, this bench right here was my original reloading bench. My dad helped me build that one bench. Uh, Okay, so how I actually got started um, and why I got started, I won't, you know, I, I've always been a big gun man. Uh, you know, I, I thought reloading was one way I could be more self-reliant, you know, not have to worry about the system. <laughs> it, you know, not everybody reloads, so, you know, so sometimes I can get ammo when other people can't, you know, during, like during the ammo shortage of 2020 and, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, I, I watch ammo trend. You, you could say I'm an ammo sexual. Uh, I watch ammo trends when it comes to as far as who, you know, like Walmart rule king, what kind of ammo they got and stuff like that. Uh, right now about the, you know, the easiest high velocity ammo you can get it from Walmart or Roll King is usually 350 Legend or 308 Winchester. Why that is, I do not know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, so how I got started, you know, I, I didn't dump a bunch of money into it to get started. I actually, we had these little trade papers, trade news times, and they, they only cost like 40 cents, I think, like 40 cents a paper. And it, people have listing, local listings of stuff for sale. And I found some reloading equipment. I think the guy wanted 100 bucks for it. And I, and the one thing I've learned in life is the best way to get into something is find somebody getting out of it. Because you will get the equipment for about half the price. It, and it's not all going to, you know, some of the equipment's going to be wore out. Some of it's not, you know, don't expect the equipment to be new when you do that. And, uh. So when I got this off this guy, it had a Pacific Press, and it the Pacific Press was only it only you can the only uh, this is a thirty out six. So the thirty out six parent case cartridges was the only thing that would fit down in this Pacific, unless there was something. It was so old, I I don't I doubt that I could have found extra parts for that press. But uh, when I say 36 parent case that means anything from 243 you know even the 6.5 creed more will fit down in it you know 308 uh, but most of those cartridges are based off the 30 6 cartridge so 30 6 is a parent cartridge if you ever hear me say something like 30 6 parent cartridge but uh okay so yeah so this little for hundred dollars, this little scale, I still use this today. This is actual like a like a metal, um, not like a cheap stuff you get from RCBS or some of the cheap stuff you get from RCBS. Um, so yeah, I probably spent a hundred dollars there. The I got like three, three or four different dies. I got thirty out six die, two seventy die, and a six millimeter Remington die. I think those are ones I got with that Pacific Press and that scale right there and they probably give me some other stuff. I don't remember what it was, but uh <clears throat> so 
Uh, the later, I don't know, I can't remember if I actually had, I had the Pacific Press set up, but I don't remember what I'd done with it exactly. I think I just used, like, not primers out, or I may have had, I had, I think I used it in conjunction with this RCBS. Uh, so I've always been a single stage guy, but, uh, so after the Pacific, after I bought that little setup for about a hundred bucks, I went out. And got a partner this is the rcbs partner press uh it's like a you can get like a partner reloading set and some of the equipment some of the stuff was just cheap like they had scale it was really cheap I, ne I never had to use it i've always used the metal one and uh i i probably wouldn't recommend this i would probably actually recommend a uh RB, RCBS rock chucker. Just do some research, uh, you know, uh, before you buy anything in reloading. But uh, you're not going, most people are probably not going to run out and buy like a Dillon setup or, you know, a progressive. You need, you know, you start off, start off with like a single press to figure out what you're doing. But <laughs> before you sink a bunch of money into it. So, so yeah, I probably got started with, uh, I would we'll say, you know, this is about 20 years ago. They were probably roughly 300 bucks worth of equipment. That's how I got started. All right. Okay. So now we're going to move along. Uh, the, some cartridges, in my opinion, some cartridges ain't worth reloading. I usually do, you know, I usually do like a cost analysis, I guess you could say. Uh, it's like, and when I say some cartridges ain't worth reloading, that you should buy in bulk. These are three that I do not think you're, is worth reloading. Uh, I don't think reloading 223. It, I don't think 223 is worth reloading. I think you should buy it in bulk. I think you should buy a 9mm in bulk. And I think you should buy a 762 by 39 in bulk. Um, the biggest reason. I've reloaded 223, and I and I don't know if it's just me or if other reloaders have problems with 223, but I broke a lot of equipment reloading for 223, and uh, it it's it's nothing I need for big game hunting. So it's, I would rather buy 223 in bulk or 5.56, you know, the typical prepper AR-15 cartridge. So so that's one I would buy in bulk, uh, nine millimeter. It's not worth, you know, the time, it's not worth investing your time in, or, or it wasn't before the ammo shortage. <laughs> I still, I'd still, I would probably wouldn't reload nine millimeter. Um, 7.62 by 3.9, you know, before the ammo shortage, 7.6239 was dirt cheap bulk ammo. Uh, it's not something anybody, most people is going to reload anyway. Uh, the casings are steel most of the time, so. Uh, so cartridges I would reload. Uh, definitely your your big game hunting cartridges. Uh, back in the before the sh ammo shortages, I wish I had that one. Uh, your typical box of uh, let's see if I can get one. I I, I guess right here. Uh, before twenty twenty, that's a box of six five Creed more Winchester XP. This box of ammo right here was twenty bucks at Walmart. That's a dollar, about a dollar round, and that's not unreasonable by no means. Um, this same box of ammo right here now at Walmart's gonna cost you about thirty three bucks, and uh, Biden nominates. All right, I'm gonna take this. So before 2020, I could uh, I could reload a high power hunting cartridge uh, for about 40 cents around versus today. Um, so you, if you buy a box of 20, you know uh, that for a dollar piece, I was reloading these for about 40 cents a piece, and so that's a big savings right there, 60 cents. Um, so it just makes sense to reload high powered hunting cartridges or, you know, if you think you're a sniper or a sniper cartridge or whatever, but, <laughs> um, 
today today to reload one high powered hunting cartridge probably cost you about a dollar versus you know you you're gonna pay a dollar fifty at the store probably gonna cost you almost a dollar to reload it now you know times change uh the cost effectiveness of shotgun shells and shtf uh as far as reloading versus buying in bulk if you got a semi-automatic I'll tell anybody this, uh, before you buy a bulk amount of ammo for a sh semi-automatic shotgun, make sure it's going to run that, sh those, that ammo before, because uh, if you buy these cheap 100 round boxes, them really cheap 100 round boxes won't run in a semi-auto a lot of times. Uh, the only ones I find that will run pretty reliably is a box of Remington. It's a box of Remington Nitro. These, so I've got these in bulk. Uh, these run reliably in my Remington 1100. And it's uh, mostly a bird, a bird load or skeet load, but uh, some of them I actually took the shot out of and made some buckshot and reloaded them with buckshot. And uh, they, those two run in my Remington 1100. That's why a lot of preppers will say, you know, get a pump action. The pump action will feed about anything, and that that's pretty much true. As long as it's good, reliable pump action shotgun. Uh, some of these shotguns coming out of Turkey or in other places are kind of cheap. So, uh, just know your more than anything, know your shotgun, know it's going to work or whatever. Um, as far as reloading. A shotgun this is a, a kit I made and with this kit I can actually reload a shotgun shell in the field um, that's the only thing I got to reload shotgun shells uh, part of this kit you know some of the stuff I learned from uh, Dave Canterbury videos where he's doing the long hunter series and this kit is a uh, it's mostly homemade stuff you know, there's like a, something to knock an old primer out and put it in a, like a little steel plate. I actually got a whole video about this kit and it shows me reloading the shell in the field um, and using black powder. But if you're going to use black powder, you better have a lot of clean supplies because it, it will corrode your barrel. Um, so there... Yeah, when we talk about shotguns, uh, there there's some areas of the country where, uh, like Eastern Virginia and a lot of them counties out in Eastern Virginia, you can't use a rifle and you have to you have to use uh, shotguns to deer hunt with. So depending on the area, you know, really depends on what kind of ammo you need to stock or you you if you're shot in a area where you use a lot of shotguns you may want shotgun reload equipment still rifle uh, i don't know <laughs> but uh so to me um i don't really have a shotgun set up but i, th I think you should build a sur a survival shotgun kit um, as far as shots you can pour about anything in a shotgun shell and send it down range <laughs> that's a cool thing about a shotgun and this kit, I actually got uh, BBs from, you know, for like a BB gun. There's BBs in that kit. You know, you, I've heard people using ball bearings. Uh, just anything you stick in that shell, it's going to send it down range. Which kind of makes it cool for a SHTF situation. So, something to consider. Um, as far as uh, cost effectiveness of a handgun, uh, as before, I mentioned nine millimeter, you know, nine millimeter is the cheapest, you know, handgun you can uh, buy ammo for. So that's why I don't. Uh, another thing when it comes to reliability, typically your factory ammo is a little more reliable um, when it comes to semi autos. So, uh, but when it comes, no, like I say, nine, I have more nine millimeter handguns than I have anything else because of the price of ammo. Uh, so yeah, I definitely buy it bulk. Um, if you have a 357, 38 special, 44 Magnum, most your revolver cartridges, you're going to save a lot of money by reloading those. Uh, 38 before the shortage, 38 wasn't too bad of a price, but 
you know, if you want the self-defense loads with holler points, you might want to reload those because those will get pricey. So, okay. Um, I, I, some of these, uh, some of these talking points are from Jay, from JJ's video, and I, I wrote them down and try to talk on. Uh, as far as time on re, you know, time was one of his things. There's a learning curve to reloading. You know, uh, reloading is not for everybody. If you're a person that uh, gets frustrated real easy, reloading is probably not for you. <laughs> um yeah you know it took me a long time to learn everything i learned and then when i started kind of leaning toward learning how to make my own lead bullets i found out there's a whole nother world of reloading to learn when you get into lead bullets that i don't know still don't know anything about so i hadn't uh i hadn't crossed much into i tried lead making my own lead bullets for a while but it, i don't it's it's a lot to learn so i hadn't really done that um uh, another thing when it comes to reloading and time most of the time i find myself reloading in the winter time because like um uh, you know you, you got less less daylight if, if it's daylight outside a lot of times i'm outside doing something working or whatever and fall winter i do a lot of hunting and uh but you know so I do, and I got all these hours of darkness where you're either sitting inside watching TV, you know, instead of being inside watching TV or sitting around doing nothing, I'd rather be out here in my reloading shack. You know, this is my happy place. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, we'll go over, re I'll go over this reliability again. I mentioned, uh, so... Like when it comes to reloads, if if you're preparing for SHTF and uh, your semi-auto cartridges, you know most of your defensive guns are probably semi-automatic, AR-15, nine-millimeter handgun. Uh, do you want to take a chance with a reload? You know, reloads may not always be the most reliable. Um, I found out the other day I was using some of my reload 300 blackouts and it was some cases I made. I don't know if it was the cases or whatever. But I found out some of these 300 blackouts wouldn't feed, would not chamber. So, and it, but you know, most of your factory ammo typically is more reliable because, you know, um, but I will say this and it's something I've run into here recently. I've been having a lot of problems with uh, Winchester having uh, hard primers. I had a box of 100 nine millimeters. Now, I have a video. I got a couple videos. Uh, it's like five or six videos back of me trying to shoot shoot these Winchester nine millimeters, and they had hard primers. And uh, I was also deer hunting, and I I was using Winchester 125 grain XP for my six fire Creedmoor, and uh, I see an eight point buck up on the hill. I throw the gun up and pull the trigger and the gun goes click or, and uh, I thought, what in the crap? I pulled it back to make sure the round was in, or there was a round in there and I closed the bolt again and tried to fire again, it went click again. Well, this, you know, this buck was staring right at me. So I ejected the whole shell, put a fresh one in and the second one went off. So, so uh, you know, here in the, uh, this is something else here in the past two years you know factories are just trying to push ammo out the door uh quality control may not be the highest and uh you know I, i've heard other people talk about getting crap ammo for some of these big ammo manufacturers so there's that so to be leery of um uh, when we go back to reliability uh, hunting ammo again, you know, you, you're probably your your pro life probably ain't going to depend on your hunting ammo. It may depend on whether you eat that day or not, but as far you know, you're not engaged in a firefight with bolt action most of the time. You're, you know, you're just deer hunting with it. So uh, that's another reason to, to reload for your hunting car or rifle more than anything. Um, okay, parts availability. 
uh, for the reloading equipment if a SHTF happened. Uh, JJ was pretty pretty much right about that. Uh, you know, 2020 when the uh, during the pandemic, the, I consider 2020 a SHTF event, believe it or not, but uh, it's more like a light SHTF event. And it was hard to get anything you know, reloading or ammo or whatever. And uh, you can buy guns, you just can't get no ammo hardly. And a lot of times you had to buy buy the ammo that they had on shelf and then buy a gun to fit it. A lot of time. <laughs> it's, uh, it chambered in it. Um, a couple of things I learned right here. Uh, decapping pins. You might want to buy decapping pins in bulk if you do decide to reload. Um, also, you want a stuck case removal kit because if you get a, if you get a case stuck in your die, that die is useless until you remove that case, and those some of those are very very difficult to remove. So uh, yeah, that's why I always say don't put you all your eggs in one basket. You know, uh, have ammo, like have like bulk cases of ammo ready to go just in case you reload and stuff don't work or whatever uh okay some of the components to stock usually the ammo shortages or these panic buying you know any kind of democrats talk about they're gonna ban firearms first time you know ammo disappears off the shelf and uh the very first thing that uh, the reloaders start uh buy, grab enough is usually primers that's the first thing to disappear when it comes to reloading is primers. Um, right now we're having a, a difficult time finding a whole lot of anything, you know, primers, powder, get, uh, the bullet you want, I guess. But uh, I'll show you, uh, that's, if you want to stock some supplies, uh, component, reloading components, I usually try to uh, find multi-purpose uh, powder. This is H110. I can do 300 blackouts or 44 mags with H110. Uh, a lot of your Magnum pistol cartridges is, will do H110. Uh, Varget, Varget is a very, when it comes to rifle powder, Varget is very versatile. Uh, I got quite a bit of that. Uh, I got quite a bit of 4350 also. I got actually got like a, it was a five or eight pound can of this stuff. <laughs> So yeah, that's very versatile. Um, bullets, uh, I usually, I usually have some type of 308 bullets laying around. Uh, I got some six five bullets laying around too. That's something I like shooting now. Is a six six five. Um, I got a Grendel and a Creedmoor, and uh, so yeah, keep your back, keep powder. You, you have to stay stocked up. Uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, you may not want to allocate your powder toward a whole bunch of this cartridges. You got to kind of see where the shortages are. Like if you're in a ammo, if you're in one of these panic buying seasons, and uh, you know, you see where your shortages are before you start reloading a whole bunch of one cartridge or whatever. Um, okay. Parts of labor, storage of storage of powder and ammo. Um, well, this, you know, JJ. One of his big concerns was uh, your house is on fire. You know, he's absolutely right about the cartridges just blowing up and not hurting anything. Um, as far as this is a, my reloading shack. It's actually a corner of my outbuilding. The room, this room that you see me in, is actually like six foot by 10 feet it's a very small room um i'll have it insulated like i say in the winter time i come up here reload i i have a little heater down there i have air conditioning there i can get in here any time of the year this building is like 25 yards from my house so you know powder storage if it's you know is at least in my problem Powder storage is the least of my problems because it's out here, not in my house. Uh, if I did, I know people who, who do reload in their house, but if your house is, 
you know, burning, if your house is on fire, I think the least of your worries is going to be powder going up in flames. But, I mean, your house is already going up in flames. It'd be hard to stop it regardless. So, uh, bartering, bartering ammo during a SHTF. I have actually bartered ammo in the SHTF. Like I said before, I consider um, 2020 uh, SHTF scenario. Uh, so I've lived in this one community all my life, and I know who I know who I could trust bartering ammo to. And like in, you know, when the ammo shortage is going on, I sold some 410 ammo to one a guy. He's about a mile or two up the road. I sold him some 410 ammo so he could take his daughter turkey hunting. And uh, my next door neighbors, I sold them some shotgun shells so they could go rabbit hunting. So, you know, I know who I can trust and who I can't because I've been in this community for since all my life. If I understand JJ Johnson, he moves from. You know, from different state to different states for every few years or whatever. I can understand, you know, if he doesn't trust his community because he don't know them. But uh, so that's a you know I, that's a totally understandable. Uh, all right. Uh, as far as you know, can reload components go bad? I guess if. Uh, I, there's no mo moisture control in this reloading shack and you know my powder to my knowledge my powder's never really gone bad as long as you keep the lids on it and uh, I don't know what kind of story how long term you're talking but um, oh really I've had the actual World War II ammo for 8 millimeter Mausers like full cartridges world war ii era cartridges and after a while the primers do disintegrate and they they will start stop work i mean they will stop working after a while you'll get hang fires or hard primers and but um so yeah it's not likely that you're going to have world war ii era ammo and uh so that's like over 80 90 years ago ammo so uh so that's not a problem you probably have to worry about and as far as you know my powder going bad it ain't never happened yet but uh i like some of the advantages to reloading is a, I mean, some people tailor certain cartridges to certain bolt action rifles they they call that's actually what they call hand loading because they're taking they're making the most accurate cartridge possible for a rifle they have and and another thing uh advance your hand loading is the fact that you can make uh specialty rounds or you know subsonic rounds if you are trying to be quiet <laughs> you can make subsonic rounds and you know nobody's going a bit uh, subsonic rounds is a lot a harder or it will be harder here than a full velocity uh like here's an example of something else i've done i have a get one gun a savage combo gun has a 12 gauge barrel and a 223 barrel a 223 the velocity of a 223 round will flat tear a turkey to piece i mean it'll the velocity of the bullet will tear a turkey up so i actually made some the, the they had the velocity of a 22 magnum so it was firing like uh i think it's a 30 or 30 let's see maybe a 30 or 35 green bullet and it was fly, flying at like 21 200 feet a second so it was like a 22 magnum so it didn't tear up a turkey so you can do stuff like that so i guess in summary you know you're you can buy when it comes to buy military cartridges, buy that in bulk, and you know, five five six, the nine millimeter, uh, even three oh eight and seven six two by three nine, buy all that in bulk. Your defensive cartridges, uh, the cool, you know, three oh eight, uh, you can use. That's a hunting cartridge, so you know, get your bolt action three oh eight, 
and take your brass and you know turn them into hunting cartridges reload the, your 308 um, I would also get like I say uh, when it comes to 12 gauge you know make your uh, survival kit for your 12 gauge uh, step one survival I had a set up one time it was a uh, it's called the survival 12 gauge setup and uh and it, like had a hand crimper and everything i don't have that but anyway i hope this i hope this helps you know decide if if you want to if you want i recommend you do both buy bulk ammo and and reload your hunting cartridges so this is the shtf hunter i'm out